Good afternoon from the Africa Center for Strategic Studies in Washington, D.C. I'm Kati Nojumbadam, and today I'm joined by General Briam Diop to talk about the state of peacekeeping operations in Africa. General Diop serves as the military advisor in the United Nations Department of Peace Operations. Previously, he served as Chief of Defense Staff of the Senegalese Armed Forces, National Security, Ad Security Advisor to the President of Senegal, and Air Force Chief of Staff. He also served as Deputy and Chief of Air Operations with the UN Mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Welcome to the Africa Center, General Diop. Thank you very much. So to begin, from your perspective, what is the state of peace operations in Africa today? Thank you for your question. Uh, I think it's a very interesting question. And uh, I would rather say that the state of peacekeeping in Africa is not as positive as one would like it to be because of the fact that mainly uh, the perception of uh, peacekeeping missions in Africa is not always positive. Uh, and why we don't have a positive perception, in my opinion, is related to the fact that there are expectation gaps among the populations of Africa. Because on the one hand, they expect a lot from peacekeeping missions. But on the other hand, we can only implement the mandate we are given. Mm. And the mandates, unfortunately, are not always in adequation with the expectations of the population. So this is at the level of the perception. Now. We also think that we could have done better in terms of peacekeeping missions throughout the continent if we could benefit from a stronger support from the host nations. Uh, they're doing what they think that is the right thing to do, but we are convinced that we can do better together for our partnership to be stronger and to facilitate the implementation of the mandate. We are also convinced that with the mis- and disinformation, the population sometimes are not perceiving exactly our usefulness. And sometimes they are victims of manipulation of the information that make us be perceived as people who are not very useful to the population. And this creates a disconnection between the populations and the peacekeepers. And you know very well that without full support from the populations, it can be extremely difficult for peacekeeping missions to be successful. Well, up until now, how have peace operations contributed to African peace and security? In what ways have they been successful? I think uh, the United Nations led peacekeeping missions have tried to make sure that they contribute to the stabilization and the pacification of countries where peacekeepers are deployed because there are crises there. Uh, first of all, let us underline the fact that the UN pays a very close attention to the African continent. To date, it is believed that approximately 40% of the UN Security Council's activities are focusing on African matters. We are also every year organizing a general debate from September to December, focusing on African peace and security. We have an office at the African Union, and we have a lot of initiatives and meetings 
with the African Union, focusing on peace and security throughout the continent. And out of the first 71 missions undertaken by the UN, 31 are in Africa. Mm. And out of the peacekeepers that are deployed to these 70, to 31, uh, 71, I'm sorry, uh, missions, around 80% were deployed in Africa. And every time Africa had faced some challenging situations, the UN was able to respond positively to the continent's request. And currently we are in six peacekeeping missions, including the one in MINUSMA that is now in the liquidation phase. And in all these six countries where we are deployed, we are doing our utmost to make sure that the mandates are implemented, the civilians are protected, the humanitarian assistance is given to those who are in need, the security sector reforms are undertaken in the best conditions, the demobilization, disarmament and reintegration processes are also organized in a way that we lessen the proliferation of small arms and light weapons that are fueling conflict in Africa. So overall, we do think that, yes, there are some difficulties, but the, Afri the United Nations missions in Africa have been overall quite satisfactory. And the question one should ask himself or herself is, what would be the situation? if the UN was not there. Mm. Maybe we are not solving the conflict definitively, but at least we are able to prevent the conflict to get totally out of hand. What are some of the trends that you're seeing right now when it comes to peacekeeping operations in Africa? The trend I am seeing is that we are more and more facing a surge of non-state actors in our peacekeeping missions. And we are also suffering from a high level of violence. The surge of the non-state actors is making it very difficult for the peacekeepers to be in security and in safety because the non-state actors are not recognizing the peacekeepers as such and therefore are targeting them the same way they are targeting their adversaries and their enemies. Mm. So today the trend is that wearing a blue helmet or just wearing a blueberry does not constitute a guarantee for you to be safe and in security and to not be targeted by the non-state actors. Mm. That's one trend. The other trend has to do with mis- and disinformation that are unfortunately leading to what we call a double pain effect. On the one hand, peacekeepers are taking risk. Some of them are losing their lives. Some of them are badly wounded for Ever. Some of them, when they go back home, they suffer from some social consequences in their families. But on the other hand, because of mis- and disinformation and the manipulation of the information, they are presented as useless people. It's a double pain. They lose their lives, they take risk, but they still present it as people who are not very useful. And the trend is also uh, about seeing more and more difficulties between the mission and the host nation. Mm. And we know very well that if we don't have a good partnership between the host nation and the mission, and even if we don't have a complicity between the host nation and the mission, it can be extremely challenging for the mandate to be implemented in optimal conditions. 
And what are you seeing as far as the cooperation or complicity between countries? Has it changed over time? I cannot tell you exactly when we have noticed this paradigm shift, if you will. But I know that we have suffered from it in many of our African missions, namely in MONUSCO, where sometimes we have some difficulties. In MINUSMA also we have had a lot of challenges in the partnership that is expected between the state and the mission. In MINUSCA we have had ups and downs. And what is expected from the UN and from the host nation is to try to make some compromises so that we can meet midway because we are partners, we are not adversaries. We are trying to achieve the same goal and we are trying to implement the same mandate. And it is also important for not only the state and the missions to build a strong partnership, but this partnership should be also wide enough to cover also the populations because without the population support, it can be extremely difficult for peacekeepers to be successful because the populations are the ones seeing what is happening. And if they don't trust the mission, they will not share what they see. They are the ones hearing what is taking place. If they don't trust the mission, they will not share what they are hearing. And therefore, the mission might suffer from the fact that peacekeepers will not have the right and timely intelligence to undertake their operations in the best conditions possible. And based on all of your experience in peacekeeping operations in Africa, whether it's serving within them or overseeing them, what do you think can be done to improve or advance them moving forward? I think there are a lot of things we can do to improve peacekeeping. One number one element we need to keep in mind is the prevention. Because prevention is part of peacekeeping. If you prevent conflict and crisis from happening, I think you can remain in peace. So prevention is extremely important. React before it is too late. But we also know that realistically we cannot prevent 100% conflict. Conflict will always happen. So we need to have very efficient and effective mechanisms that can help us when conflict arise, when crises arise, that can facilitate the, the, the resolution of this conflict. And we also, this is at the national level, but we need to take into consideration that generally the security of one country is intrinsically linked to the security of the neighboring country. So we have the responsibility in peacetime to work together so that regionally we can have efficient mechanisms that can help us deal with any crisis that pops up in one of our countries. And I don't think that this is the case. We have African standby forces that should be oper operationalized to a, a level that we can react before it is too late. We also need to acknowledge the fact that peace has a cost, has a price. So we need to find ways to mobilize the necessary funds and to mobilize the necessary capabilities that can help us tackle efficiently our crisis. And today, we cannot have very efficient mechanisms put in place by our states if these mechanisms are not owned by our population. So we need to also sensitize populations, communities, so that they understand that they have to live peacefully together. And what, when a crisis happens somewhere, they have a role to play. 
so that communities remain in 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 uh, uh, in, in peace and do not engage themselves in uh, in conflict and we also have to make sure that our security institutions are professionalized so that they don't interfere in the political arena and they are there with the neutrality, the impartiality they need to respect so that they can also accompany their country when they are facing uh, some difficult moments. Mm. And when you say institutions, are you referring to exclusively the military or are there other bodies? You're no, when about? I say uh, security institutions, I am referring to the military for sure, but also to the police and to the gendarmerie in mm -hmm. countries where they have gendarmerie, all of them, the security sector with all the components, because each one of the components has a specific role to play and they are all complementary. They all need to be professionalized. If not, one that is not professionalized can maybe damage the entire work that is being done by the security sector as a whole. And what steps should African stakeholders take to ensure that peace operations adapt to meet the current and future security challenges on the continent? I think uh, Africans need to own uh, the peacekeeping missions they are organizing to deal with some crisis or conflict because it's about their own security. One cannot be in security if he or she relies exclusively on the external partners. You have to play a leading role. So Africa should be playing a leading role in keeping Africa safe and in security. And for this, Africans need to put in place relevant and efficient mechanisms that can anticipate crisis, conflict, that can facilitate mediation, negotiation, so that we have peaceful mechanisms that can help us solve our differences. This is a responsibility of Africa and when I say Africa I am referring to the African Union which is our collective good which is our continental organization and that has the responsibility to create those mechanisms. I also said earlier that uh, you know peace has a cost so we cannot dispose of efficient and relevant peacekeeping mechanisms if we do not find a way to mobilize the necessary resources, the necessary capabilities that can help us tackle efficiently our crisis. And we need also to build partnerships because Africa is a continent, yes, but it is not an isolated continent that is not impacted by what is happening in other continents. So the African security is intrinsically linked to other continent security. So we need to create partnerships with all these relevant organizations that are in Europe. I'm thinking of the European Union and NATO and all these organizations, including also the United Nations, to make sure that together we can tackle efficiently our insecurity issues. And once again, we need also to sensitize our African population, the general public, so that they own everything the states are undertaking in this domain. And speaking of those partnerships, what can the international partners do to strengthen peace operations in Africa? They can uh, share experiences, they can share good practices, they can share the costs of uh, uh, peacekeeping operations, they can uh, also participate in capacitating better our African units because, uh, for example, if you take 
the security institutions in Europe, in Northern America, they're very capacitated, they are very experienced, they're very skilled. And I'm sure that African uh, peacekeepers can benefit from their experience and from their expertise. So creating these channels of collaboration and cooperation between Africa and all the external partners, in my opinion, also makes sense. And particularly in listening the way that is over our shoulders uh, on sharing the burden. Because once again, peace has a very high cost, requires a lot of funds. And since our securities are intrinsically linked, we can find mechanisms that will help us share the burden and everybody will be at ease in the contribution that is expected from him or from her. Well, General Diop, thank you so much for sharing you. your, your time and your valuable insights with me and with the rest of the audience today. And thank you for joining us at the Africa Center for Strategic Studies. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure, as you know, the Africa Center for Strategic Studies is my home. I have been working with them for more than 17 years now. And I really thank you very much for what you're doing to advance peace and security throughout the continent. Thank you very much.